I like this problem because there are at least two ways of solving it. The first way that I'm going to suggest doing it is to use the counting techniques and the classical approach uh, that we've talked about in the previous lessons. Let's draw our box containing six white balls and four red balls. And I'm going to argue that the probability of choosing a red ball on the first draw and a red ball on the second draw is um, determined by um, counting the number of ways that you can choose any two balls. Now in this case we're choosing two balls without replacement and without regard to order, so that becomes just a combination. I have 10 balls in the box and I want to choose any two. So there are 10 choose two or 45 ways if you actually multiply that quantity out. 45 ways of choosing any two balls from this box. Now we're in, interested in particular of choosing exactly two red balls and we don't care which two they are and or, or which order they come in. Uh, so we have four red balls in the box and we want to choose any two. So that's four choose two. And then in the numerator we have six white balls and we want to choose zero of those. Well four choose two is just six and six choose zero is, is uh, one so the numerator becomes six over forty five. So that's one way of solving the problem. Now you might be thinking what does that have to do with conditional probability? Well it doesn't at this point. The other way of solving this problem is again to draw a box and starting with six wet white and four red and again what we're going to be interested in doing is choosing a red ball on the first draw and if we do that we would be left with six white and three red on the in the box after that first draw and now we're going to be interested in drawing a second red ball. Now I'm going to argue that the probability of R1 and R2 can be determined by taking the probability of getting the red ball on the first draw and multiplying that by the probability of getting the red ball on the second draw given that you've uh, drawn a red one on the first. Now how did I come up with that? Well I'm going to do a little aside here and say I came up with that by just rearranging the formula for the conditional probability of R2 given R1. We know by definition that that's the probability of R1 and R2 divided by the probability of R1. So the probability of R1 and R2 is just the probability of R1 times the probability of R2 given R1. Okay, so that's how I came up with that formula. Now, what is the actual answer? The probability of R1 is, well, here we have our original box, and the probability of a red ball being drawn, well, there are four red balls out of ten in the box, and my formula here tells me I should take that quantity and multiply it by the probability of getting a red ball on the second draw after I've already removed one red ball. Well, I have three red balls remaining out of the nine, and that, if you multiply it out, is 12 ninetieths, which, of course, we can reduce to 6 over 45. And the good thing about doing a problem two ways is you get to see whether your uh, thinking is correct in two ways and whether you actually get the correct answer. It's a way of checking your work.